All right, welcome to Coffee with Marcus. This is already episode 210. Can you believe it? And today we're going to talk about what is happening in the markets. And yes, the markets are crazy. So we got to talk about this. It'll only take us two or three minutes, but you need to know what is going on here. Then I will show you my trading routine. Many of you ask, okay, what exactly do you do in the morning? When do you get up? How do you get ready for the trading day? What is the first thing that you do? What's the second? What's the third? And I have a super systematic structured process. And I want to show you today exactly what I do from the moment the alarm clock rings uh, until, well, I'm done with trading. So we'll talk about this. Uh, we'll take a look at my current trades and the positions that I'm in. And then since you're here live, I want to answer as many questions as I possibly can. Anyhow, so good to be here. As you can see, we have a lot, so let a lot to do. So let's get started. This show is about real money and real trades. I'll show you the trading strategies that I personally trade, the tools that I use to trade my own accounts, and we will talk about the right mindset of a trader. Now, talking about mindset, I'm going to show you how to create SRC profits. And SRC stands for systematic, repeatable, and consistent because that is the key to long-term success in the markets. So if you are sick of all the hype and empty promises and you want to learn trading strategies that actually work, then click on like right now and let's get started. All right, let's get started. And as always, we start with a quick overview of what is happening in the markets because the markets are officially crazy. Take a look at this. Let me get this out of the way here. The S&P yesterday was the most important Fed meeting of the year. And at first, yesterday, as you can see, huge up bar. Everybody was celebrating what the Fed said, even though it wasn't good at all. Because the Fed said, you know what? We will raise interest rates more aggressively and we will unwind the bond buying, which is also the stimulus for the market or has been the stimulus for the market for the past 18 months, ever since we started the pandemic, that they will double the speed of winding it down. And this is where today, kind of uh, after the fireworks yesterday, it's kind of the, the hangover where traders realize, oh, what they said wasn't actually that good. And we're looking at a five minute chart of the S&P here. And after opening higher this morning, we have been sliding down here. For the NASDAQ, it is even worse because many stocks that are in the NASDAQ are growth stocks, are tech stocks, and they are being hurt by rising interest rates. Now, on the other hand, the Dow is still hanging in there. So why? What's happening with the Dow? Well, in the Dow, we will find stocks like Goldman Sachs, who is up 1.7% today. We'll find uh, bank stocks like JP Morgan, which is up 1.8% today. Banks like Bank of America, which is up 2.5%. So why are these guys up? Well, the banks are up because higher interest rates means higher profits for them. And this is what's holding the Dow up. So this morning, I mean, as we closed yesterday, the S&P 500 was only two points away from making a new record high. And as you can see, intraday, they actually pushed higher but then uh, we are going lower. So this is what's happening here. Very similar to Bitcoin here that also this morning was uh, up a little bit earlier. And now, as you can see, is sliding here together with the market. So what does this mean? It means risk off. And this is where we have the rotation going into value stocks. And this is why we want to trade value stocks, especially when we are looking at the wheel strategy. So this is what is happening. Kind of crazy, isn't it? <laughs> okay. So uh, now that you know what's happening in the market, let's talk about my trading routine. So in the next few minutes, I want to show you exactly how I trade these markets. Now, as you know, I trade two strategies. I trade the Power X strategy and the Wheel strategy. Now, I start trading at 8.15 Central Time. And uh, let me just switch back here and uh, actually bring up a document so that you see exactly because I want to show you what happens from the time I wake up until I start trading at 8.15. And uh, again, all the times that I'm writing down here are in central time because many of you have asked me for my trading routine. And Funny enough, yesterday, our mastermind member, uh, Teresa, who is also a coach here at Rockwell Trading, also decided to share her trading routine. 
completely unplanned anyhow. So let me show you exactly what I do from the moment I wake up. And my, my routine has slightly changed and I want to tell you why that is the case, why this routine has changed and uh, what I did before and what I'm doing differently right now. So let's get started at 6.30 a.m. I'm waking up. This is when the alarm clock rings and I'm waking up. Now I'm quickly to get out of bed and this is something that has changed for me. I used to stay in bed for up to an hour and started to doing some reading but then I realized that, that was kind of lazy so right now at 6 35 a.m. I'm actually getting up I'm jumping in the shower <laughs> so uh, by the time I'm done here it, it is 6 50 so we'll go through this fairly quickly here because I, I really want to show you what happens when the markets open here uh, but around 6 50 I'm making a, a coffee that's when I get started. And then at 6.55 a.m., I check the pre-market. And there's, there's two things that I check in pre-market trading here. And I want to tell you what that is and why that is. So the first thing that I'm checking here at pre-market trading, let me see if I can move this over here, is number one, uh, what are the index futures doing? So I want to know what is the E-mini S&P doing, the E-mini Nasdaq, as we head into the open. Because typically when those are down and we have a lower opening, that's when we have many opportunities according to the wheel strategy. So I'd kind of like to know what market we expect. Secondly is I want to know what are my positions doing. And here's why. If, for example, I own stocks and now I see that there's a huge, massive jump pre-market, I want to sell calls or even sell the whole position right away. So this helps me a little bit with my prioritization. And we'll talk about this a little bit more as we get closer to my opening here, as, we, as I start trading right away. Okay, so at uh, 7 a.m., because this only takes a, a few minutes, and again, all these times are in central times, this is when I'm reading newsletters and uh, browse through websites. And uh, if you're interested, let me just uh, tell you exactly uh, which ones I am looking at because many of you asked for this. So I like to have the, I like to read the, uh, the Silking Alpha, uh, what is it, the morning newsletter, something like this, Wall Street Breakfast. I think this is what it's called. Uh, Wall Street Breakfast. So this gives me a few headlines. I like to read this. I love Morning Brew. So Morning Brew is another newsletter that I read every morning. Uh, then I have a subscription to uh, CNBC Pro. CNBC Pro. So I'm watching this. I do have a subscription to Bloomberg Pro. So that's what I'm looking at. Uh, I have a subscription to the New York Times. That's what I'm looking at. I do have a subscription to Business Insider uh, and Market Insider. Now. These two, I mainly read to know trends that are happening in the industry. So uh, this is where these newsletters help me to identify what's happening in the markets right now. What are other traders focusing on? And this is more for longer term trends. Now, uh, here, here's the point. I'm doing this because, as you know, every morning, uh, Mark and I, we are doing a, a stock market update. So at uh, 7.45 a.m., I am actually going into the studio uh, that I have in my homes in Texas and in Florida. And uh, that's why I usually connect with Mark and we, we just run through what exactly we want to tell you. Now at 8 a.m. right here on YouTube, this is when we have the stock market update. And you see all of this that I've read here, this is what we are then telling you of what's happening here in the markets. And um, we are doing this for 15 minutes and now we get to the point where I actually start my personal training. Uh, trading. <laughs> Not training. I, I, I wish I would do any training there. Uh, anyhow, so that's what I'm doing. And uh, three times a week we are doing it with our mastermind. And here is what I do first. I first scan for opportunities according to the PowerX strategy. So I'm bringing up PowerX Optimizer and I'm running the scanner with the default settings. 
And here are the default settings. I'm looking for a one to five, uh, one and a half to four and a half risk reward ratio for longs only, a return on investment of at least 40%, a minimum winning percentage of 40%, closing price between five and 250, a profit factor higher than two, and the minimum of trades 12. And I wanna see what stocks are popping up according to my criteria. So this morning, as an example, we had two stocks popping up, Z and ZG. Now here's what I do. And again, this is right now uh, 8.15, uh, Power X. I'm looking, there we go, looking for trading opportunities. This is how you spell, how do you spell trading opportunities? There we go. <laughs> Thanks Google for helping me out here. Okay, so now I want to see, okay, I'm looking at three criteria. The most important criteria is the PL chart. And I want to see that the PL chart goes up from the lower left to the upper right during the whole look back time. And I like to look back over the last two years because over the last two years, we're kind of a crazy markets. So let's just go back here for a moment uh, to uh, maybe the NASDAQ, just so that you see of what happened here over the past few years. Uh, so we had this, this down move in 2018. We had a few retracements here that were actually, uh, yeah, solid 10%, 20% retracement. We did have the COVID drop. After this, we had the quick recovery. We did have the scare. This was last year towards the end of 2020 where markets dropped again. And you see, we have a little bit of everything here over the past two years. And this is what I am looking for. And then I'm flagging this with uh, yes, no, or maybe. And this morning Z for me was a, a no, same as ZG. So here the profit and loss graph looks a little bit better, but still it is not exactly what I'm looking for. Um, earlier this week or uh, last week, uh, we, for example, had uh, MUR. This looked much better. Uh, we were looking at CELH. This looks much better. So, so these are stocks that I have traded in the past, but these two stocks here, no thank you. I wasn't too impressed with these. So again, I'm looking for a total of four different criteria, but the most important one is the profit and loss chart. The other three are trendability. Do we see nice trends? The second is gaps. Uh, do we see a lot of gaps on this chart here? The third one is the $5 line. So I wanna make sure uh, that uh, we are not trading below $5. And these are the criteria together so with the PNL, this makes four criteria. All right, so now that I uh, look for new opportunities, I'm also checking my existing uh, Power X positions. So I wanna see what is happening with my existing positions. And I, I usually put them right here into my watch list. Now, right now, I am not in any positions according to PowerX. I left this one in here for you because this is one that I, um, that I was looking at recently. So I would see, did it have any exits? And that's what exactly what I'm looking for. So here uh, I'm checking my existing positions and I'm looking for exits. And the exits that I'm looking for is, did it hit my profit target? Did this position hit my stop loss or does this position have a black bar? Why? Because uh, on a black bar, I would exit here in the morning. Now you will see in a moment of why I am looking for this the next morning and not the previous day, because as you will see in just a moment, I am not uh, watching the markets all day long. Now, here's another thing that I do at this time uh, when I'm looking for existing positions. If I am trading options according to the PowerX strategy, this is when I'm setting alarms on TradingView because I only want to trade an option. Let me just uh, go back here. Uh, let me show you the scanner results today. So if I choose not to trade the stock, but the option, you see it says here, let me zoom in, only consider an entry if the signal has triggered. So this means that Z in this case has to trade above 61.87. If it doesn't trade above 61.87, this signal is null and void. So I wanna make sure that it moves above there. Now, uh, in the, the upcoming versions of PowerX Optimizer, we will have alerts natively integrated in PowerX Optimizer. Right now, it's something that you either put on your trading platform, on your broker platform, 
or here uh, where I like to have it on uh, on trading view. All right, let's go back here. So this is what I do uh, for my Power X trades. Now, then, and uh, this might be interesting for you to know uh, that only then after I done this, I'm logging in to my trading platforms. And uh, right now I'm still using two trading platforms. I'm using Tastyworks, which I will retire by the end of the year and then move all of my accounts to trade year for a very simple reason. I mean, Tastyworks this year, the way how I trade, charged me around $3,500 in commissions, which is uh, not bad at all, right? I mean, that's, that's reasonable for the account size and the amount that I'm trading. However, on trade year, I would have paid $120 in commissions. And uh, that is actually a, a pretty good chunk of money here. Also, Tastyworks charges me a 7% interest rate on margin that I'm using here, uh, while Tradier is charging me 5% in interest rates. So as you can see, I also, I, I need to check, uh, I think I paid around $4,000 uh, Tastyworks in, uh, in in interest, um, I'll double check this and I'll give you the exact number. Uh, but as you can see, I will save quite a lot of money by switching over everything to trade here. And the end of the year is a good time to do this. But you see, this is what I'm doing at 825. This is five minutes before the markets open. Now, what I'm also doing at 825 here after logging into my, into my position, so basically at around 8, uh, I want to say 27 a.m., something like this, uh, I'm checking again the pre-market prices. And this time I'm checking the pre-market prices uh, to determine if I do have any entries or exits. Because at this point, we are pretty close to the open. We are only three minutes away from the open and I'm getting a pretty good idea. So for example, um, why is that important here for me? So for Power X trades, Okay, so if, for example, a power X trade would trigger above or would open above the trigger price, I would have to place the option trade right away, right? And uh, for example, for, for wheel trades, if I do have a position, if I do have a position and the wheel trade gaps up, I either want to sell the position immediately or I want to sell calls quite immediately, okay? So again, in a nutshell, what I'm doing here is I'm setting my priorities of what to do as we are opening. Because you see, I might be in multiple Power X positions, I might be in multiple wheel positions. So uh, for, for my trading plan and for my rules, uh, that's where I like to be in, in five positions with each of these strategies. So I could potentially have 10 positions on. And now the question is, okay, with 10 positions, which one do you focus on first? And this is where it helps me here to check pre-market to see where will possibly the stocks that I'm interested in, either in trading, in entering or exiting, right? Where will it open? So this way I can... Uh, quickly write down what my priorities will be. All right, so now uh, the market's open at 8.30 a.m. So market's open. And uh, if needed, I will place orders right then. Most of the time it is not needed. And uh, around 8.31 a.m., this is when the wheel scanner starts. And uh, you see, this is where now I'm shifting mentally because I was looking at Power X trades from 8.15 till N25. So 10 minutes for me is enough to do here. And now at 8.31, I'm shifting my focus to the wheel scanner. So let me show you exactly what I do here with the wheel scanner. Now, um, automatically, it will have a bunch of stocks that are coming up. And uh, there's one thing that I like to do. So I'm shifting focus here to the wheel. And this is where we have the filters. And I'm gonna zoom in here so that you see the filters. Now, in order not to get overwhelmed by too many options here, on Mondays and Tuesdays, I like to look for expirations that expire on Friday. So if today would be a Monday or a Tuesday, I would only consider 
options that are expiring this week. Once Wednesday rolls around, so on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, this is where I'm looking at both because I will see fewer opportunities for this week's expiration and I will see more opportunities for next week's expiration. And uh, here is what I'm doing. I just uh, go through the list. I'm zooming in here a little bit. I'm looking at the stock. I determine is this a value stock or is this a growth stock? And here you can already see this is a crazy stock that I do not want to own because when it comes to the wheel, there are two super important questions that you need to ask yourself. Number one, do I want to own that stock? Number two, do I want to own it at that strike price? Now look at ANET here, Arista Networks. Do you want to own this stock? Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, just mid-November, it was trading at 516 and now it is trading at 130. Has been trading at 400, jumped all the way up and I don't know about you, but for me, this would be a clear no. So I'm flagging this with a low. There's apps, uh, digital turbines. And again, is this a stock that you want to own? This is question number one. And then question number two, do you want to own it at the strike price that is available here? Now with apps, you, you might say, hmm, I don't know, apps, is this a value stock or is this a growth stock? Because just looking at the chart, it's kind of crazy, right? I mean, in 2020, it was trading around $5, then was going all the way up to more than $100. That's 20x, that's 2,000%. And ever since it has been trading in a wild range between 150 and 90. So if you're quite unsure, I mean, for me, this would be too wild, but let me show you how you can quickly see whether this is a value stock or a growth stock. You simply click on this little megaphone that we have here on the right hand side. When you click on the megaphone, it brings up Google Finance with all of the information. And here's what I like to look for. I want to see how is the financial performance annually and quarterly? So here, as you can see, they are showing solid growth, but they're kind of growing like crazy. You see their, their uh, revenue here grows from 100 million in 2019 to 300 million in uh, 2021. That is a lot, that is 3x. This is typical for a growth stock. Now, what is very interesting here that they are profitable. Often growth stocks are not profitable and we'll take a look at a few more examples here. So uh, this is pretty good. I mean, as you can see in the last quarter, they had a loss and this is probably what we are seeing on the chart here after they reported the last earnings. Right now it's crashing and burning. For me personally, this is a little bit too wild swings. I mean, in a matter of weeks to go from 95 to 50, so I would flag this as a no. So there's BHC and you see this is how I'm going through this right now. And again, it is currently 831. The scanner refreshes every two minutes. And I'm just going through this and say, do I like these guys? Don't I like these guys? Drug manufacturers, I usually stay away from them. So these for me are kind of automatic no's because with drug manufacturers, if they have a drug, that is passing a trial and yay, it's all good, it's curing something, then they will explode in value, as you can see here, that happened to BHC. But then on the other hand, it can also quickly crash down. Uh, we had examples like this, I think it was in Novavax, uh, you see all over the place going from 140 to 320. 140 to 320, this is what, like more than 2x than going all the way back here. So that's kind of crazy and I like to stay away from this. Uh, let me just see if there's a few that I that I kind of like. Uh, Jets is always an interesting one uh, because Jets is an ETF of all of the airlines. But you see, even though overall I wouldn't mind owning this ETF, I don't want this at a strike price of 1850 because right now this stock is moving lower. We have, a, so I can flag it as a no, because this makes it easier. As you can see, I'm sorting here by flags. So instead of sorting by symbol name, where I see no, 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 right? I can sort by flags. This way, I see exactly which of the stocks I have not yet flagged. And if I'm scrolling down, I see the ones that I have flagged. Okay, uh, so there's one that uh, we marked earlier. As you know, I am 
in Boeing. So this is a stock that I'm in at 27.50. $2 so I flagged this earlier as a yes because I have traded it. Right now, the strike price of 182.50 definitely intriguing. So this would be rather a stock that I'm interested in trading. Uh, this morning in our mastermind, uh, we talked about Mara. I mean, Mara is not a value stock. And we have several mastermind members who have traded it very, very successfully. Now, buying Mara at 27 is definitely intriguing. But keep in mind, not a value stock, definitely a growth stock, very heavily correlated here with Bitcoin. If you look at this of how Mara has behaved in the past two years, and then we are taking a look at how Bitcoin has behaved over the past two years. Um, we're going there. There we go. Do you see that uh, there are some similarities, a lot of similarities? So just keep this in mind. But uh, I know that uh, several mastermind members love trading it. Uh, UAL, United Airlines, I, I liked it better in the beginning of the week, but now it's a little bit all over the place. So I would flag this to a no. Okay, I don't want to bore you with this, uh, but let me just uh, tell you of what is happening here. So the wheel scanner is starting and I am looking for value stocks. And again, the key questions here that you need to ask yourself is number one, do I want to own that stock? And number two, do I want to own that stock at the strike price? That is suggested there. And uh, I mean, for those of you who know the tool, you know that we also have a calculator here where in the calculator you can calculate whether it makes sense to sell calls, right? So we have selling puts, selling calls, but I, I, I think I mainly use it here for the scanner. If I find something that is interesting, all I do here, for example, if I go to Boeing and I say, no, oh, you know what, kind of like this, I just click on add this way, it would add it over here into the calculator to tell me how many shares or how many options I should actually buy or sell here. What is the minimum premium that I should receive? And you get the idea here. Um, now, before we, we move on here, is this helpful at all? Uh, because if it is helpful, do me a favor and click on like really quick. This way I know that this video helps you as I'm going through my morning routine. Or you might say, oh my gosh, this is boring. I don't want to know for how long this guy is showering and that is fine. I just thought I, I start with when I wake up so that you know exactly of what I'm doing. Okay, so let's go back here because uh, what I do is based on this, I flag it as yes, no, maybe, or even never. There are certain stocks that I will never trade. Right now, I'm staying away from Chinese stocks. I don't like to trade leveraged ETFs. I don't like to trade BioNTech stocks. So I can flag them here actually as never so that they never pop up again. And if you see, if I'm going down the list here, there's quite a few that I have flagged as never, like YY, XPV, UPRO, TNA, SV. So you get the idea here, uh, Riot, Pindua Duo, uh, Li. So a lot of Chinese stocks, as you can see here, and also leveraged stocks. These are the ones that I personally don't like to trade, and it's completely up to you what you like to trade. Okay, so as I'm going through the list, so the question is, for how long do I do this? And uh, then also place new trades and take care of existing trades. Because the question that comes a lot is like, when is the best time to trade? Is it early in the morning? Is it later? And uh, here is the deal. For me personally, if I'm just personally trading at nine o'clock, 9 a.m., I'm done. So if I don't find anything to trade in the first 30 minutes, I'm done. Now, um, slight disclosure here, or uh, so that you know exactly, when I'm trading with the mastermind, which we do uh, two to three times per week, uh, so when trading with mastermind, um, I trade until 9.30, just because there's a bunch of questions here. And again, all times here are in central time, and usually this when we are answering questions about individual trades and so on. Now, important, what do I do before I shut down my platforms? 
my trading platforms. Okay, so before shutting down, there are a few things that I personally do uh, to make sure that I'm not waking up to a surprise later that day. So number one is I'm double checking my orders. And uh, mainly here, I'm looking, okay, did I use a day order where I wanted to use a day order? Did I use GTC where I used a GTC order? Do I have, uh, let's actually put this here in a separate line. So day versus GTC, okay. Um, do I have my exit orders in place? And uh, what I mean by this, by having my exit order in place, when I'm trading the PowerX strategy, this would be my profit target and my stop loss. And if I'm having the wheel strategy, this would be a 90% profit taking order if I can get 90% of the max profits. So the other thing that you need to be really careful is to look for rejected orders. This happened to me on Tastyworks twice recently that I thought I placed an order, but after I placed it and they said, okay, the order is working, a few minutes later, they rejected it. And I thought I am in a trade and I looked up what's going on and I wasn't. And at first I was talking to, to my head coach, Mark Hodge, and I said, dude, did I forget to click send? And then we, we looked in the log and this is when we figured out, no, this order was rejected. It's something that is new. I have not experienced this in the past, but recently uh, this is something that seems to be quite unique for, for tasty works. They have been rejected. And uh, so this is why you want to make sure that all the orders that you think are in the market are actually in the market. And then the last things that I enter my trades into my trading law. So that's what I do. And this is when I'm basically then shutting down. And uh, honestly, I usually don't look at the markets throughout the rest of the day. I know that uh, my head coach, Mark Hodge, does. So he's, he's watching the markets throughout the day. And if there's anything, uh, he's usually sending me a, a text or another message and say, hey, well, what do you think about this trade? And I, I'll, I'll take a look at this, but usually I don't look at this. I go above my day. So let's go back to this. And let me also tell you of how my trading routine has changed. I did not used to wake up at 6.30. I used to wake up around seven o'clock. And then I did a lot of this reading here from uh, seven to eight. And then at eight o'clock, I jumped in the shower and then everything from here was exactly the same. So from 8.15, I haven't changed a thing in many, many years. But as you know, um, when was it? Maybe around April or May 2021, uh, we decided to do this, uh, this stock market update because, I mean, as you can see, I've always, done a lot of trade, uh, a lot of reading. And all, all of the newsletters that I read, it takes me around 45 minutes to an hour. I just thought, or Mark and I thought, it would be cool if uh, we could actually go live and tell you of what's happening here. So um, you can dramatically shorten this. So optional, uh, let me just uh, tell you, optional. Here is what you could do. Uh, you could actually at 7.30 a.m., uh, wake up, then uh, take care of, uh, I don't know, shower, coffee, well, whatever you prefer doing in the morning. I would say it makes a lot of sense at 8 a.m. Listen to the stock market update because this way you know what is happening. And then at 8.15, you start trading. So you can shorten the whole morning routine by an hour easily. <clears throat> now, now you know exactly of how I'm trading my accounts with these two strategies. Uh, you, you also know exactly minute by minute what I do. I've shown you the tool that I like to use. And uh, if this has been helpful, then uh, click on like to like this video. And oh, yeah, before I forget. OK, before I forget right now, because uh, it is the end of the year, as we are recording this or as I'm going live here, it is December 16th. And some people said, hey, uh, can, can we do something special? towards the end of the year. I, I, I need a, a tax write-off. I would like to invest in myself. I would like to invest in the software. So yes, we currently do have a special going on. And I wanna just show you because we have something super special during this time of giving. So let me just go to Rockwell Trading 2022. There are two things 
that we have for you. So I'm going to share my screen. First of all, this is the first time ever where we allow you to not only buy one license for $19.97, which is $1,000 off the regular price, but also buy two licenses for $29.95. So this is where basically if you want to partner up with somebody and say, you know what, why don't the two of us buy two licenses? You basically get it for $1,500, which is we never ever have done such a low price for the PowerX optimizer. So all you need to do is find a buddy and then uh, say, okay, who of the two of you is investing in it and who is reimbursing the other one through Venmo or PayPal or whatever it is. The other thing is that we are doing a live session where I will show you how I will adjust my trading plan. And this will be on December 30th at 7 p.m. Central. So the, the day before New Year's Eve, we're doing a special session where I'll show you what exactly I'll do going into 2020. Anyhow, so I wanted to, to quickly show you that. And uh, just in case you would like to take advantage of this and you say, oh my gosh, I have a buddy and uh, we always thought about it. We talked about it. Now is a good time to buy two licenses for uh, $29.95 and then you can split it with your buddy. All right, so I'll, I'll take a look at uh, some of the questions here because there are so many great questions coming in and I wanna see that we can answer here as many as possible. And uh, Derek says, yeah, excited for today's episode. Let me just remove this here. Should be interesting. <laughs> well, again, I hope it was interesting. If it was, do me a favor and uh, click on like here. And so good to see everybody here. And yes, I'm looking over here at my other screen. My camera is there my screen is there. Okay, so yeah, Dave said, uh, good, good, good for all the folks to notice that Coffee with Marcus is one hour early because as soon as we are wrapping up here, so we have to wrap it up in time today, I'm heading to the airport to go back to Texas. So I'll be there. I did something special yesterday here in Florida and uh, you will learn more about this tomorrow when I'm sending you an email. And this is all connected to the Christmas calendar that we have going on here right now. And if you don't know what that is, somebody's probably dropping a link here somewhere in the chat or we'll also put one in the description here. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so Brian said, um, Marcus, you mentioned we should focus on value and not so much on growth stocks. Possible to include a filter in the PowerX optimizer that would help distinguish between the two. And you know what, Brian, we have been thinking about it a lot. and. It has been easy to do that before 2020, because before 2020, there were several criteria that we could use. For example, moderate growth. By moderate growth, we mean growth that is somewhere between uh, 3% and 30%. So nothing crazy like doubling in revenue. Uh, we could look for profitability. We could look for dividend payments. So there are several things that we could do. And then 2020 came along and in 2020, everything went out of the window because companies no longer pay dividends. Companies that were profitable for many, many years suddenly started losing money. Companies that had solid growth for years suddenly had a dip. So this is the one challenging thing. And now we can say, well, why don't we just exclude 2020? And we, we are looking at different things here. Um, we, we have the, the next version of PowerX Optimizer coming out next week. There are some exciting things. If we do have some time here in a few minutes, I can give you a preview. Otherwise, I'll be happy to give you a preview in the next Coffee with Marcus because we will have cryptocurrencies in PowerX Optimizer. <gasps> what? Yes. So this is only one of the things we have exciting changes and uh, we will show you. Okay. Hey, there's Peter K. For once, I'm able to catch the live stream. So good to see you here. Peter K. Super active here in our mastermind community here. Love it. Okay. Good. And uh, yeah, you see, scan for profitable companies only, Jake. And you see, we're really, we're really thinking about it. Okay, profitable, what? Over the last quarter, over the last two quarters, over the last three, last four quarters, over the last year, over the last two years. So trust me, we are working on this almost every day. So Mark and I are, are talking about different scenarios and I'm talking with the development team of how we can implement it. And yes, I know that this is a feature that has been requested many, many, many times. And we are planning to release a feature like this that makes it easy for you to recognize value stocks versus growth stocks 
in the first quarter. So this is uh, the plan right now. It's uh, it's coming. Okay. Andy also says, hey, good to see you, Andy. And he's amazing in our community. Every day he's going through the scanner list and uh, lets everybody know based on his experience. And uh, Andy has been uh, with the um, with us for quite some time and uh, for almost a year now also in the mastermind. And so he's very close to us. Pay close attention to him if you're in this community here. All right, good. So uh, Ray says, can you talk about market breadth? Um, I, I, I don't even know that. You see, Here's the deal. I used to make trading so complicated. I, I'm very familiar with uh, volume profile. I'm very, very uh, familiar with market profile. I know point and figure charts. I know range bars. I, I know uh, pretty much every single indicator there is. I know so many different concepts. I know candlesticks. I know candlestick formation. I know all the different chart formations. And you see, for me, at some point, my head was spinning. Don't know about you, but what happened to me is that I suffered from analysis paralysis because I was looking at too many things. So this is why I decided to keep my trading simple. And this has helped me um, because I, I, I'm not that smart. Uh, so I, I, for me, I need to keep things simple and I need to have simple plans that I can follow. But I'll be happy to, to look into this and uh, uh, give you in a coffee with Marcus my take on this if you're super interested here in this. Okay. So uh, let's see what other, uh, Gordon says, is this a dead Santa bounce? We will see. I mean, the Santa Claus rally should kick in here any day. And honestly, this morning, after I saw that the stocks were shrugging off what Powell said yesterday, which I thought was pretty bad, uh, I thought, oh my gosh, okay, Santa Claus rally starting right now. But no, no, no. I mean, traders woke up here and say, well, actually, you said that he'll raise interest rates three times. That's not good at all. And it is not. Okay. Good. Um, Harvey says, any good videos on learning uh, the um, what is Trader Workstation from Interactive Brokers? I still have several accounts. I think it's three accounts with Interactive Brokers. I'll look into this because I haven't found a lot of uh, a lot of video tutorials on Trader or Interactive Brokers. There's a lot of video tutorials out there for Fidelity, for Think or Swim, uh, for Tastyworks. But I'll, I'll look into this for you. Okay. Good. 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 All right. What else do we have here? So good to see everybody. And uh, Tastyworks is right now, as far as I know, not yet available in Canada. Uh, you might want to look into Quest Trade, but Quest Trade is pretty expensive. Or Interactive Brokers. And Interactive Brokers here is available. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, David said uh, not yet. Uh, you can get on the mailing list. Right now, I think the best option for you in Canada would be Interactive Brokers. Okay, uh, yeah, Interactive Brokers is, is a pain worth the saving on fees. They're so much cheaper than Quest Trade. If you're with Quest Trade, consider switching to Interactive Brokers. All right, cool. What else do we have here? Um, Interactive Brokers is only good if you have $25,000. I don't know if that is true. This is mainly for day trading if you want to avoid the pattern day trading rule. I don't think that this is a requ uh, country requirement. So you might want to look into this because for trading the wheel and trading the PowerX strategy, you can definitely do this with a smaller account than 25,000. It's possible. It's possible. Okay. And uh, yeah, Junior said they were bought by a UK company recently. So Tastyworks has been bought. So they're in the middle of a merger and we will see what happens here. All right. Cool. Uh, let's see what other questions do we have? Bernard is asking, do you wait a few minutes after the market opens to eliminate prices gapping up and dropping quickly? See, Bernard, this is where it depends. If I want to sell stocks, then of course, if they gap up, I pretty much sell right then in the first minute. This is why I said earlier, right, when we are looking here at my, my trading routine, in the first couple of minutes, this is when I'm checking pre-market and this is before the wheel scanner start. I might place orders. So it really depends a little bit, uh, Bernard, because uh, if you're trying to get into a trade, then I would wait of what happens over the next five minutes. So if you want to get into a trade here, let's say at 100 and it gaps up to 105, I would wait a few minutes and see if it comes back. And if it runs away, it runs away, you let it go, right? But often what you see is that trades are coming back there. All right, good question. 
So Derek says, is there a way to order books at the same time on the same site or must they be ordered individually? Um, Derek, send an, an email to Nicole at rockwelltrading.com. I'm pretty sure that Nicole can help you with this of ordering these books at the same time. I'm not quite sure Nicole is working with the Fulfillment House uh, where we have, we have to print always two or 3,000 books at a time and uh, then they're handling all of this anyhow. Good. What else do we have here? Um, Okay, uh, Oscar says, unfortunately, I have only my account for PowerX and using Fidelity for the will. That's fine. That's fine. Does Trader charge for assignment? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. I mean, just I, I do have a, a, a video uh, on different brokers where I compare these prices. I'll link to it in the description and probably Nicole can find it. If you uh, Google or if on YouTube here, you check for uh, best broker um, 2021. This is where I compared five brokers and uh, compared different fees so that you know what is most important to you. I mean, as uh, you see, I uh, paid a lot in fees and this is why I'm switching over here uh, to Tradier from Tastyworks because it's just too expensive. I mean, three and a half thousand dollars a year, that's quite a lot. <laughs> okay, anyhow. Hey, um, I, I know that there were a few more questions, but as I said, I gotta rush to the airport. This is why we did it here an hour earlier. If I miss any of your questions, just wait until this stream is over. Put them in the comments and I'll be happy to look at those in the comments. Or just uh, contact the team here. It's super easy to contact us. Call or text the office uh, or uh, send an email to support at rockwelltrading.com. All right. Fantastic. Well, I, I hope that you enjoyed today's episode with my trading routine. Um, I'll ask Martin to put up a few more videos right here uh, that might be interesting for you. So we'll probably put up one for the wheel strategy, another one for the Power X strategy, if you would like to dive deeper or there's more links in the description, check it out. Anyhow, have a great rest of your day and be excited for the email tomorrow where you see what I did yesterday because we did capture it on video. Anyhow, talk soon and uh, stay safe.